Okay, I'm going to give a little synopsis on chapter four. So I'm basically going through the text and just giving you some clarity on some of the concepts. So 4.1 is the first section in chapter four that you're to read. We're going to focus on that right now. So what is a chemical equation? Well, it shows you what reaction or chemical change happened um, with one or more species and how it or they were converted into chemically a different species. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you a generic example. I'm not going to use chemical equations or atomic symbols, I should say, in this example. I'm just gonna use a plus B equals C or arrow C. Okay, let me explain what each of these components mean before we go on to something that represents a real type of chemical reaction. So everything on the left-hand side of the equation is called a reactant, and together these are the reactants. They react together to form what is on the right-hand side. And on the right-hand side, this is the product, or if there are more than one, the products. Okay, great, so you have a reactant on the left, you have a, re you have a product on the right. Now what's inside these little parentheses Right here, these are your states of matter. So we spoke about this in the first and second week. These are your options for states of matter. So example for states of matter, you might have um, a liquid for L. You might have a G for gas. You might have an S for solid. Or you could have AQ, which stands for aqueous. And it just means that that is dissolved in water in H2O. So that's what the letters in the, in the parentheses mean. There may also be some other numbers. So let me use another color to highlight. Let's say you had a two in front here a three in front here, and a one, which is usually not shown in front of the C. So it's usually left with no number in front if it's a one. These represent what are called coefficients. And they are used to balance an equation. So that's what we are going to focus on in this section if we are balancing an equation. And other part that you may see is potentially a number that is, let's see if I can squeeze another arrow in, down here. So maybe you'll see a C with a little two next to it, or you might see C with a three. Okay, that signifies how many of those atoms are chemically bonded together. So in the way that I have written it, I have one of each, A, B, and C, in the subscript area. I'll highlight that. So there's one right here, one right here, and one right here. That is distinct from the coefficients. So the only thing that we will be manipulating or changing to balance an equation is from the coefficients. So let's turn our attention to this example. You may see uh, this while you're reading your textbook, but you may have a question or a problem that states or requires you to balance an equation. So looking at the following equation, let's just highlight some of the ideas that we've already spoken about here. Moving this over just a tiny bit. Okay, so here on the left hand side, this is a reactant. I am using chemical and molecular formulas um, here so that we can be specific about a certain type of chemical reaction that's taking place. 
This arrow means that it's undergone a chemical reaction to produce hydrogen, which is H2, in the gas phase, and oxygen, which is O2 in the gas phase. So these are our products. Okay, so notice that there is nothing uh, in front as the coefficients. And we want to know how to manipulate this reaction so that I can balance the left side to equal the right side. Now, what do I mean by balance the left side to equal the right side? I mean that the number of each type of atom on the left needs to equal the number on the right, the number of each atom on the right. So that is what is balancing an equation. This is balancing our chemical equation. Okay, so we're going to use that idea. So let's write out underneath each side how many of each type of atom is present currently. So what I've written so far underneath is H and O on the left and H and O are on the right because those are the two types of atoms that are represented in the equation. So on the left, I'll use a different color. I have two hydrogens because this two only corresponds with this hydrogen. And I have one oxygen because in the subscript right here is a one. The one is not shown. Ones are not shown. So let's move on to the right hand side. This two corresponds with the hydrogen. So I have two hydrogen atoms. And then the two next to the oxygen right here means I have two oxygens. So notice if I'm comparing the left and the right hand side, the only thing that is not balanced is my oxygen. Now, what do I have to do in order for this side to equal this side? You have to ask yourself, what do I multiply, in this case, the left-hand side by in order for it to equal the right-hand side? So what I need to do is I need to take a 2. I need to put it in front of water, H2O. So that now this changes the numbers on the left to a 4 and a 2. So notice now I have the same number of oxygens on the left and the right, but I do not have the same number of hydrogens. The hydrogens have changed. So I have 4 on the left and 2 on the right. This means that I need to put a 2 in front of this hydrogen. That 2 is multiplied by the 2 in the subscript to make this a total of 4. So I have a total of 4 hydrogens. Now notice I have equal number of oxygens and equal number of hydrogens. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an insight of how to attempt balancing um, these problems. Let's do one more. I'm going to write it out. Then you can pause and try it, and I'll give you the answer after you pause. All right, so take a look at this reaction. I have nitrogen gas and oxygen gas on the left-hand side. These are my reactants. And then I have dinitrogen pentoxide, if you can remember from our naming series, on the right-hand side. So how would you manipulate the coefficients, that's the numbers in front, in order for the left and the right-hand side to have equal numbers of each atom? Go ahead and pause the video, try, and then I will give you the answers. Okay, did you get it right? Let's check. 2 times 2 means I have a total of 4 nitrogens. 5 times 2 means I have a total of 10 oxygens. That can be a little confusing. Let's put ox right there so we know it's oxygens. 2 times 2 gives me a total of 4 nitrogens. And here, this 2 is also distributed to this oxygen. 
So that means I have a total of 2 times 5, which is 10 oxygens. So notice they do balance on both sides.